you ever find yourself in a situation where you acted a certain way and right when you did it, you're like, why'd that happen? Today, we're going to talk about changing your behavior, a continuation to part three about how we disrupt the cycle of life to create positive change. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you positively influencing your day. If you're not positively influencing your day, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So welcome to part three, where we're going to learn, continue to learn how to disrupt that cycle of life. The cycle of life is that life of change, the life of the, the continuation, the how we experience life. First, there's a thought that elicits an emotion that elicits a behavior that creates a belief. And today in part three, we're going to learn how to disrupt our behavior because everything that we do is this continuation, right? Our life is on repeat. We, we learn something, we have a thought, we have an emotion, we have a behavior, it creates a belief and we just keep going and going. And then pretty soon it creates our whole life and it creates our whole personality. So some of you might say, I'm just a depressed person or I've had anxiety my whole life or I'm just an angry person. And you know what? That's not true. And I want to continue to prove that to you that whatever your consistent emotional state is in your life, no matter what it is, is only an emotion based on a thought that's based on a belief that's reinforced with behavior. Now, this is kind of the psychology, but I love getting to the energy of because I want to elicit change. I don't want to be controlled by my environment. I don't want to be a slave to my emotions. I want to be able to go, you know what? I don't want to act like that. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to think that belief. And I'm going to dive in and I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to get to the root of it and I'm going to pull it out. So it does take a lot. It takes a lot of mental energy, but I'm telling you, it is so much better on this side of the fence than the other side that I was on. So let me tell you a little story. For my whole entire life, I was pretty quiet. Early on, I have a very dominating, negative, pessimistic thinking brother. And back then, my mom was very similar. Both of them very angry. When I was growing up, living with the two of them was quite challenging. As the younger sister, I didn't talk a lot. Because when I did, it got shut down pretty quick. Well, it doesn't take much to then go, you know what, I think I'm just going to keep all my thoughts to myself. It wasn't until my brother moved out, I was 12 years old, going into seventh grade, that I started to kind of emerge from this shell. And if you guys know me, you'd be like, I can't even imagine you not talking or, or not expressing yourself. I think that holding all that in for such a long period of time, by the time I felt safe enough in my own skin and safe enough in my environment, my home environment, my school environment, that I kind of let loose. And by ninth grade, I was pretty expressive. Now, I wasn't always safe in my own skin. That's a completely different story separate from today. But I will say that when that started happening, it really allowed me to fully express myself. But there was a lot of pent up anger. So when I came up to go to school here in northern Michigan in Traverse City, I came up to go to college, I was 17 years old, I have a September birthday. So I graduated high school when I was 17, came up here to go to college. And uh, I noticed that there were a lot of triggers, I have all this freedom, my mom's not here. And my brother's not here. And I'm just kind of on my own figuring things out. So I moved, you know, a couple hours away from home. And all of a sudden, I realized that there was a lot of pent up anger. People would annoy me and and trigger me in some way. And then I would lash out in an anger response. Sometimes I would throw things, sometimes I would punch things, I would swear a ton. And it just became almost until recently, who I was. I am just an angry person was what I used to say. I'm always angry. Well, anger has a purpose, but bottom line, it's just an emotion. 
And I realized that it was affecting my relationships. It was also affecting the apartments I lived in as I'm throwing things around the house, right? And if you experience any of these, any kind of a negative emotion like this, like anger, frustration, irritability, anxiety, loneliness, depression, all of these are emotions. They're emotions, you guys. They are not an identifying factor of your personality. They're not. And you can argue, well, you probably wouldn't argue with me because if you're listening to this, you know that I am going to challenge every thought, every emotional state, every belief you have and every behavior. So today when we talk about the behavior, so when I would have a thought, it would trigger this emotional response. I would have an anger outburst and now I'm angry and my behavior is is that of like a raging bull, which created the belief of, I don't like this person, they don't like me, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm an angry person. When I kept that thought going over and over and over again, as I'm telling myself, I guess I'm just angry, just like I talked about in yesterday's podcast about disrupting the emotion. If I keep saying that over and over again, it becomes a belief. Now my subconscious mind goes, oh, okay, I get it, we're an angry person. So every time something like this happens, we need to feel this way and we need to act this way. It was a protective mechanism for myself. All the angry times when I was little trying to express myself and my mom and my brother shutting me down. It was tough. It was really tough. Okay. So, but it's not the end of the story. So now speed forward to the year 2000. I went to work at a school as a basically an assistant, a pair, a pair professional, they call them. And I basically assisted the school. So I was in and out of different classrooms, I would help in the office, I would help any teachers that needed it, until basically, I became good enough that I got my own classroom and I became a gym teacher. We had trainings at the beginning of the year. And this wonderful woman used to come in. And she would teach us different relationship techniques, not only the relationship with ourselves, but the relationship with our kids, our, our, our classroom, and how to bond and build those relationships. And it was all based on choice theory. And it was and uh, relationship therapy. And it was fantastic. It was actually a huge bookmark in my life that completely propelled my life in a completely different way. And in, in lots of in lots of areas. I remember sitting in the gymnasium. And um, we were, I was sitting in the back row because I'm always talking and goofing around and stuff. And I was leaning back on this chair and I had my feet, my toes up underneath the table. And I was leaning back, I had my hands out and I'm leaning back in the back two legs of this chair, goofing around while she's talking. And one of the things that she said was based on, we were talking about emotional states and she goes, you have a choice. You have a choice about how you feel and how you react to a situation. My ears perked up, my eyes got wide, and I'm standing there listening intently to what she's saying. Because right now I'm thinking, I'm just an angry person. My life is never going to be any different than this. And it is affecting my entire life. And I listened to her and she said, even if you feel angry, even if you feel whatever the feel was, whatever the emotion was, you have a choice. I have a choice. I dropped to all four legs on the chair and I looked around at all of the teachers and all the other pair pros that were in that in that meeting. Did anybody else have that same epiphany? Everybody seemed to just be paying attention, but it hit me like a Mack truck, like a Gen Mack truck. I have a choice, meaning I'm empowered. I don't have to feel this way. It's an emotion based on a thought that creates a behavior that keeps going and creates a belief. I'm like, wait a second, stop the, stop the train. Are you joking? And that day, I remember going home to my apartment and I lived in an upstairs apartment. And I remember going up there going, okay, I'm going to try this on. I want to know that I have a choice, that I am empowered. And the next time I feel angry, I can do something that is going to stop me from feeling anger. Or if I get really upset and I start crying because I'm angry, I'm going to do something that is going to disrupt that, that's going to remind me I have control. So I sat in my apartment and I waited. I waited for something to piss me off. <laughs> it seems really ridiculous, but I sat around, I'm looking around. I had a cat, one cat at that time, Vinny. She was so amazing. She never made me mad, but I'm like, okay, 
what's it going to be? Like I was like waiting and still waiting and still waiting. Dude, it took me like three days and that is not the case. And it wasn't the case, but I think it's because I was waiting for something. I was very aware. And I was like, I think I was managing my emotions without even managing them. Like I was curiously waiting for something to show up. And in the meantime, three days later, okay, I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what the trigger was, but I'm in my apartment and something happened. And all of a sudden I can feel that I'm starting to get angry and I'm starting to pace in my apartment and I'm starting to, to feed the story and I'm telling the story about something I'm getting really upset about. And then all of a sudden I stopped and I snapped my fingers right in front of my face. And I said to myself, no, you have control. And in that moment, I disrupted that emotional state by bringing myself to the present moment by snapping my fingers. I snapped my fingers and I said, no, you have control of your emotions. And I stopped. It stopped. And I could feel this sense of calm wash over me. And it was, I laughed out loud. I, I continued to laugh. It was this huge release of emotion that I, and I cried and I'm like, oh my God, I had no idea. I had no idea. I just assumed that the outside world managed me and my emotions had a grip on me that this is how my life is going to be. And I'll be God darn if I didn't manage it that one day that set this whole ball into motion of where I am today that I know if I snap my fingers and I say, no, do not let that get, uh, take a, get a grip on you. So this is where one of the things I want you to create, no matter what emotion it is, and no matter what emotion it is, no matter <laughs> what emotion, I want you to come up with something, two parts, one, that it's a movement and a sound. A snap in your face is a really good one because it's not terribly loud, but it's a disruptor. It's a disruptor. You're going to become a disruptor in your own life to create change. So every time you feel that emotion come up, I want you to first snap your finger or clap your hands or slap your thigh or make a noise or do something that is a noise with a movement like snap your finger. You're welcome to use that one. I find it to be really simple. If you can't snap your fingers for whatever reason, clap your hands, okay? Then I want you to think of a word. Mine was no. You have control or no, don't let it get a grip on you. But it was like, no, you got it, Jen. You got it. Listen, don't let anger take control of you. It was something like that, something very encouraging. So snap my fingers, say no. Another one is, it's okay. The other, the other it was a couple of weeks ago, all of a sudden Amy's getting up early in the morning and she comes to say goodbye and she's like, the refrigerator feels warm. And I'm like, son of a... <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like, you know, six o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, dang, you know. And then I was... Um, I think I had gone back to sleep. I get up. I was out in the garden that morning and I remember thinking about it and I was starting to get annoyed and I just put my hands up and I'm like, nope, Jen, don't do it. Do not give your power away to the refrigerator. It's just money. It's just a refrigerator. It's just a little bit of food. We'll go get some ice. We'll put the coolers. We'll get the food, you know, that can't be at that dropping temperature. Put that in the cooler with some ice. We'll call somebody. We'll get it fixed. It's okay. So that's another good one. It's okay. And then giving yourself encouraging words. Jen, it's just refrigerator. Jen, do not give your power away to the refrigerator. <laughs> don't do it. You don't want to. So a lot of times, I am sorry, I keep forgetting to do this, but like calling back our energy is, I need to write that in my notes. So I remember to do that at the beginning. But when we call back our energy, that is the same as calling back or keeping your energy from sending it out to things that are pissing you off. So your kids don't pick up their clothes. Your husband doesn't finish the laundry. Uh, the refrigerator just took a crap. Traffic is not moving how you want it to. Stop giving your power away to those things. 
you having that energy contained within your body is going to allow you to create. You need like 100%. And if I've got 10% at the fridge and 10% over with the kids and 20% with my husband who's not cleaning up his, his stuff and I've got you know 25% over there with traffic, how much is that? That's like 70%, right? I have 70% of energy out there focusing on all this stuff that is making me upset or annoyed or irritated or crazy. I'm asking you to keep your energy inward. Keep it inward. Keep it where it goes out. It's like yin and yang energy. And if you don't know what yin and yang, go back and listen to my podcast about yin and yang. You know, keeping my energy flowing. It goes out, it comes back in. It goes out to the fridge because I have to manage it. I have to do something. So I make a phone call and done and call my energy back. I'm going to... Not, I'm going to shut the, the kids' door, right? I don't want to look at their laundry all over the, all over the floor. I will make something, I will make something uh, different for them. I will help them to learn the skill, whatever. And, but I'm going to call back my energy. I'm going to talk to my husband or my wife today, and I'm going to say, hey, you know, is there any chance that you could remember I'd leave a note? Can I do something right? And then my energy comes back in. Go out and solve it and bring it back in. Yang is the energy that goes out. Yin is it comes back in. Because listen, if I keep near 100% of my energy in my body without sending it out to all of these issues, do you know what's going to happen? I'm going to have the energy to create. I'm going to have the energy to heal. I'm going to have the energy to share with what I want to share with who I want to share it with. It's going to allow me to become fully empowered. And that's what I'm about. Igniting the light. You have a light inside you. You are meant for wonderful, great things during this experience on this planet. Your emotional state is only something you've given so much attention to that it has created a belief, which we're going to talk about in tomorrow's or um, the next episode. It's part four. So snapping your fingers. It might sound just it might sound like crazy. You're like, listen, Jen, I've had depression my entire life. And I'm going to go, Okay, well, you haven't had it your entire life because when you were younger, you were not depressed. Just saying. Okay, Jen, I've had I've had depression for most of my life. And you're telling me that all I have to do is snap my fingers and I can change that. And I'm going, yes. Now, are there a few other steps in there? Yes. However, this is going to put you back in the driver's seat. You are going to start recognizing that you are empowered and you can manage your emotions. This is such a quick and easy and fun way. It really is fun. I look around, I go, okay, what do I got to be angry about? And I get, it took me three days to I kind of fell back to sleep, right? Where, where I kind of let my subconscious run on autopilot. That's what I say about falling back to sleep. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's something. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I remember I can disrupt this. And I did. And it made me the happiest I'd ever been in my entire life. Because if you are depressed, if you are anxious, if you are feeling like your emotions have a grip on you and you're never going to be happy again, listen to what I'm telling you disrupt that behavior, disrupt it, and get to the point where you can understand fully that you can manage this. I promise you. I promise you. Dude, if I can do it, you can do it. And I know I hear so many people say that. I'm like, that's bullshit. My story is different. It's not actually. The actual words of the story are not different, but the structure of the story is exactly the same. Something happened outside of you. You had a thought about it. It created an emotion, created some behavior, and then solidified in the belief that this is how I have to act in order to get what I want, in order to get attention, in order to get someone to do something for me, in order for me to claim my victimhood, in order for me not to have to work, right? And I'm promising there is happiness on the other side. I promise you. I have studied energy. I've studied words. I've studied psychology. I've studied how this all fits together. And the puzzle is complete. It is sitting in front of me and it is beautiful. And I want you to start putting the pieces together. So the very first thing is creating that disruption. The other, another thing that you can do is literally changing your environment. Now, I have talked a couple different times a little bit about feng shui is changing the energy of your environment. So looking at the colors in your environment that might elicit the mood. If you're feeling depressed, get those windows open and let the sun come in. Find some brightly colored and calming colors like blues and greens and brightly colors, bright colors like yellow and bright white and get that in your house. If you have dark furniture, get rid of that dark furniture or you keep the furniture and get covers on it or bright pillows, paint your walls. And I tell you a long time ago, Brandon and Cameron were sharing a bedroom 
and they were probably Cameron was probably six or so which Brandon would have been nine or ten and they were sharing a bedroom and this was my Harry Potter room and so I had I had a loft in there and I had Harry Potter posters and toys and all kinds of stuff it was you know I had a reading a reading chair and I had some books in there that were all my Harry Potter books and stuff when the boys moved in obviously I moved that stuff out and moved the boys into this bedroom but the walls were red and it was kind of like old barn red so it's like the dark wood was shining through shining is not the right word but it was kind of this dull dark red and the boys were both in there brandon has autism and is very introverted i mean he's he's like social for autism but he's generally his personality is pretty introverted he likes spending a lot of time by himself cameron on the other hand is about as extroverted as they come so the boys share room okay you know mom and jen we're gonna have a conversation why don't you guys go play so they go in their bedroom now brandon doesn't really want to play with cameron he would come out and he would say can cameron get out of here and we're like, okay, Cameron, why don't you come out and read a book? I don't want to read a book. Okay, so he goes back in, play. I said, okay, well, find something quiet to play. And so he'd play, and he's loud, and he's talking to himself, and he's, you know, he's adding a lot of chaos to the room. Brandon comes back out. Can Cameron get out of here? And that happened all the time. One day, when I was studying energy and the power of colors, <laughs> I, the boys were at school, Amy's at work, and I go in there, and I decide I'm going to paint that bedroom blue. And it was this very light country blue. Not kidding. Never again did Brandon come out and say, can Cameron get out of here? Calming the colors of the room down completely changed the environment. Completely. One day and it was over. Painted the bedroom. Everything was great. Brandon never once came back out and said, can Cameron get out of here? It was amazing. So, Looking at and changing your environment can be a huge, huge deal. One, declutter your crap. Get rid of your crap. Look around your room. Fold the blankets. Put up some col- put up some some bright colors. Get rid of dark stuff. Anytime there's a dark corner in the house, dark furniture, um, dark frames on the wall, dark painting, dark carpet, brighten it up. Energy needs to move, and and if you think of dark things like black and browns and the rust colors and all those dark colors, they absorb. They absorb energy as well as light. Lighten things up. I had a room that was dark brown, and I'm like, oh my God, I have no energy whatsoever. I literally painted, there's four walls, I painted all of the three walls this rich creamy color and left the one that was, it's actually right behind me right now, it's kind of a dark brown, it's like a Hershey brown. All of a sudden, weird, next day I have amazing amount of energy. Changing your environment can have a huge, huge impact on your life, on your mood, on your energy. Right now it does, okay? So looking up, look up some colors, how do I feel? Right now, I feel depressed. How do I want to feel? I want to feel happy. Go on Google and say, hey, give me some happy colors. Show me what happy colors look like. And figure out in your house, in that room, where can I add some happy colors? This is a disruption. It is time for you to take control of your life. It is time. It's time. It's time for you to sit back and go, how am I feeling on a regular basis? That is not my personality. I want to disrupt that. I don't want to be depressed my whole life. I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be anger, angry. I want to be happy. I want to be filled with joy. I want to feel a little bit better than where I feel right now. Because if you're depressed, you're not going to feel joy. You can't get there. That's too far away. I talked about it yesterday in our in a part two in the emotional state. But listen, it is it is vital. And I know that you can get it. And again, I will say it a thousand times. If you want to go deeper with this, if you want someone who's going to have a little bit more tools and more support for you, please reach out. Send me an email, TC at gmail.com. Say, hey, Jen, let's talk. It's a free conversation. Let's just see how I can best serve you because it is time for you to become the woman warrior that I know you can be. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room TC at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.